Hey everybody, Playtendo Guy here, and I'm back with another video. It's Monday, so you know what that means. It's time for another weekly pickups video where I go through all the stuff I picked up and had delivered over the past week. So, without further ado, let's get into it. anyway for the past week it's been not a bad little week i've picked up about 10 titles and overall i'm really happy with what i picked up a lot from hmv a lot from the hmv sales and a few from asda as well so let's start straight into it so first off let's give our best your nicked impersonation because i bought the sweeney yeah uh and not just the sweeney the sweeney too yeah, um, Network's got a sale on, which is brilliant. A lot of the stuff is like $7.99, which is pretty good. And with the recent passing of the brilliant Dennis Waterman, I thought I'd pick up the two Sweeney films. I've been meaning to pick them up for a little while on the sale, and thankfully they were still on the sale. There was only a couple of copies of each of these left, so I picked them up real quick. So first up, we have the Sweeney. This one came out in 1977, around about during the third series of the TV show. Uh, starring John Thor and Dennis Waterman. This is just like a bigger budget version of the classic cop show from the 70s. I think the show ran from 74 to 78 and this and Sweeney 2 were the only two big budget films they'd done. During the 60s and 70s there was a time when like pretty much every big major comedy in Britain actually got a big screen um, adaptation uh, from Man About the House, Steptoe and Son, Porridge... They all seem to like get a big screen adaptation. And I suppose it was good business. They were made on a shoestring budget and did very well in the box office. And a lot of these ended up being like the best selling films of the year. But it was very strange to see the Sweeney actually get a like a big budget release. But yeah, this one's really good. I did watch this the other night and the transfer on this is really good. John Thor and Dennis Waterman is brilliant in this. It's in the slim cases and you do get a booklet though you do need a magnifying glass for all like small print it is just absolutely ridiculous but it's a really nice little booklet but yeah you do get a theatrical trailer image gallery and a pdf material but yeah that is sweeney and up from it is as you can guess sweeney 2 it released just a year after the original and it just basically tells like a really like a bad group of robbers going around decimating people in their way. Uh, both this and uh, the Sweeney were quite hard hitting at the time. The TV series was already hard hitting but these two films were quite brutal. Uh, because they went to the big screen they allowed for like more violence, sex and nudity in it. So if you got come in from the TV series be prepared. It can get quite gruesome. Some violence in this is actually quite shocking. I can remember watching these two films when I was a kid and the ending to this one, oh, oh, it scared me when I was a kid. Mind you, I was only about eight at the time. I probably shouldn't have been watching it. But again, you do get another booklet with Sweeney 2. It's only about a 10-page booklet. But again, um, oh, can't show that. Um, again, very, very small writing. But this one actually went over to Malta. So obviously the budget was a little bit bigger for this one. And it's nice to see a bit of different change of pace from like the London setting. But uh, for my money, I do, I do think this one's the better one. The the ending to this one just really was good. And like the final lines from Dennis Waterman, they didn't kill him. You did. I don't know. It just like perfectly ended that film for me. But yeah, this one's not too bad. And again, for seven ninety nine, seven ninety nine each for him isn't too bad. So yeah. That's the two Sweeney films. Next up is the HMV, like sale, clear out sale. There's been a few more titles added to it and a few more titles I want to get. I went over to Boston at the weekend, went into the HMV there, and again, brilliant store, very friendly staff, very helpful staff. And I picked up this film by Luc Besson. Um, I have seen Lucy before and I've always wanted to watch this one. Uh, I've seen it about, but never with a slip, so I picked up Anna. I'm going to gather it's going to be like a very much a similar sort of female John Wick sort of over the top action violence film. It's got a great cast in it. You've got Luke Evans, Cillian, Killian Murphy and Helen Mirren in it. So the cast there is great. You do have Sasha Lush, 
so I'm going to gather that's her. Haven't really got a clue what she's actually been in. It's normally $7.99, but for $3.99, I thought, why not? I did have a look at the 4K of this, but the 4K was about 10 quid, and I thought, oh, I'll just get the Blu-ray. Looks like it's going to be something very similar to that one with Charlie's Theron a few years ago, Atomic Blonde. I'm going to, I'm getting that sort of vibes, but yeah. You do get a digital code in this, but I'm pretty much certain the digital code's not going to work. Though I do say that the digital codes in the 20th Century Fox films still work, well, as of actually recording this video. So yeah, you do get slick with it, same amount of work underneath, so yeah. For $3.99, we have Anna. So if it's a film that I did notice a few weeks ago that was on sale for $2.99, but unfortunately my local store sold out on it, so I went to the Boston store and they actually did have it in, so I picked up Spring for $2.99. I uh, don't really know a lot about it, but again, it's like one of the 101 films, so it's really cheap. But the quality of 101 releases are always great. I think this is basically like a horror story of such. It's basically like this guy falling for this girl, but there's more to her to meet the eye. Sounds pretty good. I've heard some positive things, so I thought, why not? For $2.99, you can't go wrong. Film star Ben Foster and Thompson McKenzie. This probably was her first actually big theatrical role before starring in Old from last year and Last Night in Soho and this is called Leave No Trace. I can remember when this came out, ooh, it must have been about two or three years ago, I think it was like 2019, 2018, there was a bit of a buzz about this film, a lot of critics were praising it and it does say it was featured at Cannes and the Sundance Festival. Basically locally it's about a father and daughter who live out in the wilderness, they don't have no um, access to the outer like world, social world. They don't have their friends or anything. They just live out in the world. And one day they get found and they get brought into society. And this is like the tale of how they try to fit in society, from what I gather. I've heard a lot of positive things about it. Um, Thomas and Mackenzie is a really good actress. I really enjoyed her in Last Night in Soho. And I'm looking forward to giving this one a go. Um, Apparently this was exclusive to H&V, never knew that, so I thought why not pick it up for 3 dollars with a slip, but yeah, that's a leave no trace, it doesn't actually say that you get any special features in this, which is a shame, so it's just the film, but for £3.49 I thought I'd give it a go, 4Ks, I searched through like the 4K aisle of the discount aisle, and I do have this on Blu-ray, uh, but I thought I'd upgrade it to the 4K edition because the Blu-ray I have is the pound van copy and the disc is a little bit ho-hum because like it was a replay. So I thought I'd pick up Spider-Man 3. Yes, the much maligned, very mixed entry, final entry in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's definitely a, definitely a missed opportunity and it is down to like Sony getting involved on the Venom storyline and... They should have just let Sam Raimi do what he wanted to do. But for what we got, I really didn't mind it. I think it's a nice, enjoyable film. Definitely can't beat the other two. I think the other two are near perfection. But for what it is, Spider-Man 3 is a solid time. So you do get the 4K in this, the Blu-ray, and you do get a digital download. You do get a couple of uh, special features here, such as commentaries and a blooper reel. But I do have the bonus disc from the Blu-ray I had, so I'll just pop that in here. So yeah, uh, for four ninety nine, I'm very happy to have that in the collection. I had a look to see if they had Spider Man Two or Spider Man One for four ninety nine, but unfortunately they don't. They only do have it for like twenty quid. So uh, I'll probably wait a little while before I pick them two up. But yeah, I really do like the slip on that one. So yeah, that's Spider Man Three. Now section, and I was searching through um, the four K section because I knew this title was on offer. And lo and behold, I actually found it, and it's scanned for £5, and that is Groundhog Day. So says there that it's 20 quid or 2 for 30 No, 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 no. I'll give you a little hint on how to tell whether a title is 4 99 is that if it has the digital code or not, because these titles were re-released last year or the year before without the digital code, so you just get the 4K and the Blu-ray. So these ones with the digital codes are actually 4 99 If you check Spider-Man 3... That also has a digital code. So yeah. If you go searching through your local HMV and you wanted to find this one, just search up in the 4K aisle and see if it does come with a digital code. If it does, just ask them to scan it and it will come up as 4 99 They did scan it here, but they actually scanned it there and it did come up as 4 99 So I saved myself 15 quid. 
never actually seen this film before. Always wanted to. Um, with the slip, with the Blu-ray for four ninety nine, I'm very happy to get this. I do. Now, the general gist of this is like a Bill Murray comedy, and he's basically just repeating Groundhog Day over and over again. Um, I think Andy McDowell's in it, I think she is, and I'm pretty certain there's like a, a ferret or a gopher in this. I'm not really certain, to be honest. But yeah, uh, 4 99 very happy to have that in the collection. Probably will watch the Blu-ray really soon, but at least I've got the 4K there when I eventually upgrade. So yeah, that is Groundhog Day. I really do like these Sony slips because they like always like well you'll see there they all match up that's really cool and it's just a shame that Sony now doesn't give slips with their new releases this leads to a new release I picked up from Asda I'm a big fan of this game I've actually been replaying the fourth and the third entry on my PlayStation this past week probably mainly due to because a lot of people I know have been watching this film and been saying it's not too bad so that's Uncharted when this was announced, this was announced years ago, and this, I can remember this has been in development hell for absolute years, and honestly, at a time, I thought we'd never see this come out. It was supposed to come out 2015, 2016, and then they had to keep getting new directors, um, and Sony, oh, it was just a mess, and I honestly thought we would never see this happen, but lo and behold, here it is. It actually happened. Whilst I do think the casting of Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg is a bit ho-hum for, like, Nate and Sully, I'm willing to give it a go. It does look like a lot of fun. I've heard from a lot of people that they really did enjoy it. And even people who liked the game said that it isn't too bad. You do have Antonio Banderas in it. So that's also a good sign. Did very well at the box office as well. And probably will be getting a sequel. And we are getting uh, actually getting quite a few PlayStation games being turned into films. Uh, God of War is apparently happening. And so is Ghost of Tsushima. So that's going to be cool. And I'm going to see this is going to be at the start. Of like a PlayStation cinematic universe. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to watching this one. I picked this one up from Asda. I thought, I was um and an and I thought, you know what, just pick it up. I'm looking forward to watching this. If it's anything like the Tomb Raider reboot from 2018, I'll be really happy. Because I honestly really enjoyed that film. I think that's quite underrated. So yep, yeah, that's Uncharted. So in um, Asda... I actually went to the Asda in Boston, and that's quite a huge Asda. It had, like, loads of titles, and they had, like, this uh, 2 for 10 off on some certain Blu-ray, so I thought, you know what, I'll pick them up. I've been after one of these ones for quite a while, and first up is Gangster Number 1, starring Malcolm McDowell, David Wallace, is that how you pronounce his name? I haven't got a clue, and Paul Bettany. I mainly picked this up because it stars Paul Bettany in it, and it's a gangster film set in the 60s, so it should be pretty cool. It's a Film 4 production. I can remember when this came out. I think this came out in early 2000s. But yeah, don't really know much about it. All I know is like it's a gangster film. Probably be a lot of violence in it. But it looks really good. So yeah. Do you get some special features as well? So yeah, that's gangster number one. And next up is a two disc set of a film that I've been wanting to watch for a little while. I've been getting into Al Pacino's films quite recently, watching um, The Irishman, so I've been wanting to watch some more of his films. I picked up Dog Day Afternoon, and I picked up, is it Simone? Was it on DVD a few weeks ago? But I saw this in the 2 for 10 offer, and it's a Michael Mann film called Heat. It's a director's definitive edition. It stars Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, and Val Kilmer. So yeah, it's actually a two-disc set. Don't really know much about it. I think it might be like a cops and robbers sort of tale. But I do know that the film was like nearly three hours long. But to get it in a two disc set with Gangster Number 1 for 10 quid. I think that's a pretty solid little deal. So yeah. That's heat. So yeah. Anyway. That'll do it for this week. That is all the pickups and deliveries I had for the past week. Overall not a bad old haul. Tell me in the comment section what you think of my pickups in the comment section down below. And don't forget to join me, Andy and Mike on Wednesday night for another Wednesday night movie live stream where our special guest will be Mike from Did You See That and the 4K Lowdown. So join us at half past seven on Wednesday night for another night full of movie talk and fun. And as always, thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you could like and subscribe, that'd be totally awesome. And as always, till next time, bye.